Hi, welcome back. This is 0965. This is um, the last section before our next test. And uh, usually I don't put this section actually on the test. I, I might do like a, a homework assignment, but um, this part won't be on the test, okay? And it's a little different, so you'll kind of see, okay, this, this doesn't really jive with whatever we've been doing. So, all right. Anyways, without further ado, let's take a look. Um, uh, first, we're going to start by just a little bit of a review. And what we're doing is solving systems of equations. And uh, you had two methods that you should have been taught before, or we hope you've been taught already, um, the substitution method and then the, the addition method. Substitution. Uh, OK, so for example, um, number six from page 341, I think. Uh, so this is from a previous section um, that maybe you saw in 0955. Uh, okay, so, so what we're dealing with here is, is basically two equations with two variables. And you can solve this for an ordered pair. And, and you know, geometrically what you're talking about is the intersection place of two lines. So you may recall, you know, if you graph these things, and I don't know what the graphs look like, but if you graph them, when you solve, what you're doing is kind of looking for the uh, intersection point. And there are weird cases that we'll have to talk about, um, like when the lines are parallel, then there's no solutions. And the, the third case, when the lines are right on top of each other, there's infinite solutions. Okay, So we'll talk about those at the end, and those will come up in this new setting with uh, linear equations and three variables. And, and truthfully, geometrically, um, it, it's more complicated, but it becomes more interesting because it's more applicable to our world. And once you get in the three variables, you're actually in three-dimensional space, which is where we exist as humans, right? Um, instead of lines, you'll be talking about planes, like pieces of paper, basically, not airplanes, but um, just flat sheets, and we're worried about where those things intersect. So they can intersect in weird places like lines. Um, you know, let's see if I can draw. Like here, this would be a plane, and then maybe you have another plane intersecting it like this and going through it like right, right like that. Okay, so uh, the, the uh, three-dimensional counterpart of the two-dimensional line is the three-dimensional plane. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's get back to here and get a little bit of a review. Um, the substitution method says first solve one of the equations for one of the unknowns. And usually you want to pick um, the unknown that doesn't have a coefficient. So in this case, the, the y is probably your best bet. Okay, so I'm going to solve that first equation for y. So we get 2x minus y equals 7. I'm going to um, subtract the 7 to the left, add the y to the right, and then flip-flop the equation. So you end up with y equals 2x minus 7. Then what you do is substitute that expression into the unused equation. Okay, So what will that look like? It will be 3x plus 2 times y, which is 2x minus 7, and that will equal 0. And then you solve this resulting equation for x. So I'll have 3x plus 4x minus 14 equals 0. 3 plus 4 is 7x. Um, add the 14 to the other side, you get 14, 14 over here. Divide both sides by 7, and we have one of our solutions, right? We have the x-coordinate of our solution. Now we need to take that x-coordinate and sub it back into one of the equations that has both variables. And, and typically the easiest equation is actually this equation. I mean, honestly, you could you could use this equation, the first one. You could use this equation, so long as there's two variables there. But this equation that we solved is the easiest to use because it's already solved for y, right? So look, I take y equals 2 times x, and I'm plugging 2 in for x because of my solution here. So 2 times 2 minus 7. So y will equal 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. See how easy that is? And so our, our solution is just the point 2, negative 3. Um, of course, they'll want the solution, quote unquote, solution set. So there's only one solution if you want. You can put in the curly brackets. And it's 2, negative 3, and that's it, right? So hopefully you've seen that before. Hopefully you kind of remember it. If not, there's a you know an example. Um, let's look at the other method. So the other method was the addition method. 
and uh, here's number nine from uh, way back when. So we have 2x plus 3y equals 1, and the other equation is 3x plus 2y equals negative 6. So the, the uh, kind of strategy here would be to add column-wise and hope for a cancellation of variables. So here, if I added 2x plus 3x, I get 5x. 3y plus 2y, I get 5y. So there's no cancellation going on. So what you want to do is to multiply one or both equation by a non-zero number in order to produce a cancellation. So if I multiply the first guy by negative 2, the first equation, and then the second equation by um, 3, it's going to produce a cancellation when I add column y. So let's see, negative 2 times the first equation, and you have to multiply everything by the negative 2. So I get negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 2. Um, the second equation by 3, I get 9x plus 6y equals negative 18. And you see I'm going to get a cancellation between the y's. The y's will cancel out when I add column y. So here I go negative 4x plus 9x is 5x. The y's cancel, bring down the equal sign. And then uh, negative 2 plus negative 18 is negative 20. And then divide both sides by 5, and you get one, uh, one coordinate of this solution. So negative 4. Now we need to get the other solution. And you can pick any equation, again, that has both variables. I generally just go back to the first one I see and use that. So. Um, I plug in negative 4 for x, and I got negative 8 plus 3y equals 1, and then I have 3y equals 9, and then I have y equals 3. So um, negative 4 comma 3 would be the uh, only uh, coordinate in the solution set for this system. Okay? Okay, so hopefully you've seen that before. What we want to do now is take it up a notch. Right? So a lot of math, we're just building kind of on top of what you already know. And I mean, even if you're the smartest person in the world, if you, if you don't have the basics of math, you're not going to understand um, what's, what the heck's going on later. And it's just the way it is. You know, I, I can get like a certified genius into, into one of my higher level math classes. They're going to flunk if they, if they have not seen it before, you know, if they don't know the basics, if they don't know how to do algebra. So, um, yeah, hopefully you, you can appreciate that fact. Um, anyways, my, my, my tactic for solving these problems, um, basically I want to produce, it, you want to, take the system that's given. So let me show you an example of the system, maybe, so you have some notion as to what's going on here. You're going to get three equations now with three variables. Okay. Uh, probably one of the hardest part about these problems is just copying it down correctly, because there's so much Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I copied it correctly. Okay, so our first first sub goal is to uh, produce a system of two equations and two unknowns. So it turns it into one of these prior problems that we already know how to solve. So we want to produce um, two equations, just write EQS, in uh, two unknowns. Once you do that, you already know how to solve that system. Okay, solve the, that system, solve system. Um, and then it'll turn out that all you have to do is back subbing to get the answer. Okay, okay so it's, it's usually this first task, uh, this first sub goal, which, which is the most difficult. Um, I, I kind of give you a, ta a tactic for doing it, but it's more of a uh, on the ground strategy. Or really, sometimes you have to kind of you know, every every one of these is kind of, it's unique. It can be unique in its own way. So you're going to have to use your brain, folks. Um, I, I, I'll try. Later on, we'll, if you keep taking math, um, I think maybe even in this class, we'll see kind of a standardized, no, it's in it's in pre-calc. You'll see a standardized method for solving these. But uh, for right now, we, we just uh, kind of, 
Okay, so anyways, my, my tactic is uh, first to eliminate one of the variables. So I'm gonna choose one of the variables to eliminate. And again, just like before, I, I'm, I, I have a, you know, an idea of the way I wanna approach it. I have a strategy here, right? So before I wanted to pick the variable that didn't have a coefficient, that's kind of the way you're gonna to wanna to do it here. So um, it looks like the Y would be easy to get rid of. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, choose to eliminate Y get rid of y. And you work two equations at a time, all right? So first I'm gonna work with the, the, the uh, first two, so like I'll, I'll number them here, one, two, and three. I'm gonna first work with uh, one and two, and if you add those two equations, so we're using the addition method, you see the y's are gonna cancel automatically, even without any multiplication or anything. So I'll come down here, I'm, all I have to do is rewrite it. I don't have to multiply by anything. So x minus y plus 3z is 8. And then uh, 3x plus y minus 2z is negative 2. Okay. Add it column wise. So 3x plus 1x is 4x. Um, the y's cancel. And then you get plus uh, 1z. And on the other side, you get 6. Okay. okay so that's one equation. Um, I need another equation in terms of x's and z's. So this time I'm going to choose um, uh, equation number um, three and equation number or one and three, right? You can't use the same two equations, obviously, that would be nonsense. But you try one and three and you see you'll get a nice cancellation if you just multiply number one by four. Okay, so, so let's, uh, rather than writing it all out again, I'm going to sort of in country here just multiply this thing by four, the top equation equation number one. So you'll have 4x minus 4y plus 12z equals 8. And then I'm just going to copy equation number three down verbatim. So 2x plus 4y plus z is 0. Okay. And then I'm going to add these up column wise. So I get 6x, the y's cancel, and then plus uh, 13z, which seems like a weird number, but it, it's, it is what it is. And then, oops, I forgot to multiply the eight. See how easy it is to make a mistake in these? Um, so 32 here, okay. So that will equal 32. All right, so now I have my system of two unknowns, and two equations, two unknowns, which I know how to solve, okay? So solve the resulting system. And I'll just copy those down, four X plus Z equals 6, and then 6x plus 13z equals 32. I know how to do this, right? So I'm going to multiply, I guess, the, the first equation by negative 13. Okay, so uh, 12, carry the 152, negative 52x minus 13z equals, uh, I think that's negative 78. And then the second equation you just keep as is, 6x plus 13z equals 32. And then you could add column wise. So this will be um, negative 46x plus zero equals negative 46. Okay. Usually the answers kind of turn out nice, especially, um, I, I guess I didn't put one, I'm not gonna put one on the test, but it, usually if I have one on the test, it's not gonna be a crazy answer. I'm just not that lazy. Um, but anyways, we, we got one solution, right? We got x equals one. So, so finally, the last step is to back sub. Um, so step three, uh, and, and we could start back subbing here, right? We could, we could go to this other equation um, in the system and solve for z. So even before I go kind of pop out of this scenario here, this, this two equation two unknown, I could still get z out of it. So let's put x in for four, for, for uh, one in for x, excuse me. So four times one, one in for x plus z equals six. So get four plus z is six. And of course then z is two. So I got I got two, two of the uh, ordered triplet, okay, which is the solution to the system. Now I need the back sub, right? So what you're gonna do is pick any of the three original equations and uh, plug one and two into it, right? So uh, step three, I'm back subbing. And I got X, I believe was one and Z was equal to three. Is that right? Two. So, so much for my memory. Okay. Uh, 
is used too. X is, I gotta be super careful because you make a mistake, you know, it screws everything up. Okay. Um, I'll just pick the first equation from our system. So one minus y plus three times two is eight. In other words, one minus y plus six is eight. So I'll have seven minus y is eight. Add the y to the other side, subtract the eight. Um, I get y is equal to negative one. So our solution this time, instead of an ordered pair, you get an ordered triplet. And the ordered triplets live in three dimensions. One, negative one, two. If you keep taking math, you'll get to actually work with that kind of things. You could, how do I plot three dimensions? You can use this thing. This is my x-axis coming out of the screen. This is my y-axis, and then you're adding in a z-axis. Okay, so to plot it, you would, and we we don't plot it in this class, but I just want to show you. You go up one, and then uh, back negative one, and then up two. Okay, so um, the 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 uh, point and and three-dimensional space would be kind of like right there. So let me. It looks pretty cool. I just want to show you. Okay, so I kind of went over there, and then up two. Okay. So you can imagine it's kind of out there on that on the edge of this little rectangular box. That would be the point. Uh, one, negative one, two. Okay, and um, yeah, if you kept taking math, you you would work in that 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 kind of space. So it's really cool stuff. But uh, anyways, back to reality here. Um, let's look at one uh, more of these. Uh, and then we'll look at the weird cases where there's no solutions and infinite solutions. And then we'll, we'll jump into, uh, uh, what is it called? My math lab, all right? This next question will be your video quiz question. Okay. So this is the video quiz, video quiz, video quiz. Um, all right, so so the deal with this one, it kind of looks different, you know, and we give you a, a, you know, a tactic for solving problems, a, a sort of an idea or an approach, but ultimately, like I said, you, you kind of have to, once, once you get on the ground and, you, and you're looking at what you got, you, there's, there's usually some sort of, you know, well, this doesn't quite fit kind of feeling to it, right? And you have to adapt, okay? That's part of being a human. Um, unlike a robot you know we have to we, th we think we can we can critically th think about things and and see how things work and uh, most robots can't do that at this point but uh, we can't so anyways um, looking at this thing I need to get a system of two equations and two unknowns if you look at that first equation uh, equation number one we already got one of the equations right we can use x plus z equals three in our new system all I have to do is get one more equation uh, by getting rid of y. And, and so what I'll do is use equations two and three and eliminate the y variable by multiplying equation three, equation three by two, okay? And that will eliminate the y. So, so what am I doing? I'm eliminating y. I already have one of my equations, so I'm only, only gonna have to do one elimination. Eliminate uh, y. Okay, here we go. Um, my new system, I'm multiplying the first equation by two, and I like to notate everything. Um, so times two, and because it's above the arrow, arrow, that means the top equation, I'm multiplying it by two. So I'll have two x plus, whoops, it's the bottom, equ it's equation three, I wanna, yeah. sorry. Uh, so multiply by th uh, two in the bottom equation. Okay, so the top equation is as is, let me see, equals one, and then the bottom equation is 4x minus 2y, and there's more than one way you could have done this problem, right? You could have done it in some other ways, but this is probably, in my opinion, the best. Okay. Okay, so add those up, you get uh, 5x plus uh, 1z equals seven, and now we automatically have our new system. So solve the new system. Okay, so my one equation is equation number one, which is just given. And then my other equation, five X plus Z is seven. I'm gonna multiply that second or the first equation, whichever by negative one, I'll, I'll pick the first one because that's what I did in my notes. Okay. okay so I'm gonna multiply the first equation by negative one 
and I get negative x minus z equals negative 3. And then 5x plus z equals 7. Uh, then uh, do the addition method. So 4x equals 4. And finally, x is equal to 1. All right, um, so I, I now get the other variable, so back subbing into, um, I guess I'll take this equation. I have 1 plus z is 3, so z will be 2. And then finally I can back sub to get uh, the y variable. So I'll pick equation 3. Um, I have 2 times 1 minus y plus 2 is equal to 3. So 2 plus 2 is 4 minus y equals 3. Move the 3 over, move the y over, so y will equal 1. And then my solution is the ordered triplet 1, 1, 2. Okay. okay. So finally, let's go on to the uh, unusual solution sets. And usually these are easier to deal with because you'll sort of uh, be confronted with a, a false statement or a true statement. You could just kind of quit and write up your answer. Um, the the uh, okay. So so let's dive in here. Okay. So unusual. I think that's what the book calls them. Unusual solution sets. Um, first off, the no solution, which they're calling the inconsistent case. So you can think of inconsistent, things are out of line, they're not in order, but, but the truth is you'll have parallel planes okay, in space. It's kind of like parallel lines. Right? Um, the ways of writing your infinite solution will just be the curly brackets with nothing in it. You could use this symbol, which basically means curly brackets with nothing in it. Um, okay. Part B, uh, infinite solution cases. And these are called dependent. And for dependent systems, let me take a look at uh, web assign real quick. I want to see how they want your solutions. Yeah, so so they'll give you an option uh, for infinite or no solution in your in your uh, write up uh, when these occur. So you don't have to do anything special. Later on in pre-calc, there's uh, some specialness you have to take care of. But um, OK, so you'll just be able to, to click on the appropriate button. Um, all right, let's take a look at an example then. Number 18, we have 3x plus 4y plus 5z equals 8. Um, x minus 2y plus 3z equals negative 6. And then 2x minus 4y plus 6z equals 8. And the way you approach it is just like before. Okay? Um, you, you identify a variable. You want to eliminate probably the x variable in equation. Because um, you can see in equation 2 that x doesn't have the coefficient. That's usually kind of how you want to approach it. Right. So one, um, I'm going to eliminate x. So first, I will use equations uh, 1 and 2. And I'm going to multiply equation 2 by negative 3. Okay. Okay, so I just copy equation 1, 3x plus 4y plus 5z equals 8. Equation 2, then, it will be negative 3x plus 6y minus 9z equals 18. And then I'm going to add them up. So I get 10y um, minus 4z equals, I think, 26, okay. or 36, sorry. Thirty-six. Okay, uh, then I'm going to use equations um, Two and three, and I'm going to multiply equation two by negative two. Okay, so negative two times equation two is negative two x plus four y minus six z equals twelve, 
and the other equation 2x minus 4y plus 6z equals 8. And you should see something unusual happening, right? All of these variables are canceling out. So you're just getting a big zero on the left side, and on the right side you're getting 20. Okay, This is a false statement. In other words, the thing just doesn't work. And so it's the inconsistent case. This uh, will happen, um, all the variables should cancel out, and you'll get a false statement. And uh, so you can click on the no solutions. So you can write no solutions, or you can write, um, if I were going to put it on a test, you could write the uh, null set symbol or the set with nothing in it. Okay, okay um, the infinite case then, let's go take a look at that. So, you know, overall, it's just business as usual, and uh, then you'll end up in one of these weird situations, you know. You, you'll know it when it happens. You'll know that, well, this is weird, and if it's weird, then it's either infinite or no solutions based off of uh, the resulting statement. If it was 20 equals 20, you would be you would have the infinite solution case. Okay. Okay, and anyways, 6x minus 8y plus 2z equals 8. All right. So I'll probably work um, eliminating z because there's a lot of z's without coefficients. So that will be my first step. Uh, get rid of z. Uh, right. So um, first I'm going to multiply. Uh, let me number the equations again just in case you don't know. 1, 2, 3. Um, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by negative 1. And that will produce, and then add it to equation 2. So negative x minus 2y minus z equals negative 4. And then 3x minus 4y plus z equals positive 4. And we get uh, 2x minus 6y equals 0. Um, nothing wrong with that. You can have that equation. All right, so then I'm going to go to equations, uh, I guess, and making sure I'm consistent with my notes. That's why it seems like it's taking me forever. But um, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to use equation one and three and multiply equation one by negative two. Okay. There's negative two. Okay. So negative two x minus four y minus two z equals negative eight. And then we have equation three: six x minus eight y plus two z equals eight. Add those up, so I get 4x minus 12y equals 0 again. Okay. And then I want to uh, solve that resulting system. Okay. So right as of now, I don't see any problems, right? So, but uh, let's see, solve system. So I have 2x minus 6y equals 0, and then 4x. Uh, minus 12y equals 0. And I'll multiply the first one, I guess, by negative 2. And what do I get? Negative 4x plus 12y equals 0. And now you can kind of see it, right? There's an issue. Um, when I add everything up, I get 0 on the left, I get 0 on the right. Okay, so when you get a true statement resulting, so last, this is a false statement. And that implies then that uh, you have the no solutions. When you have a true statement resulting, well, guess what? That implies you have infinite solutions. Okay, so this is a true statement, and it implies you have infinite solutions. OK, OK. Um, Okay, okay. Um, let's go to my math lab, right? Let's see what they have in store for us, what kind of craziness they have for us today. Okay, so this thing. All right, so one of the cool things about, about this process is you could, if you have three points in the plane, and, and oftentimes in modeling you'll have, somebody will give you data, um, like here they give us negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, 1, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 7. Um, 
you have data and then you want a curve to fit the data and you use the curve to model the data. So you can use it to make predictions about the data and all kinds of great stuff. Um, you, you may have taken, I don't know, statistics. If you take statistics, they talk about linear regression. And in those cases, they use equations of lines to, um, to uh, model the data. Um, but here we can actually build quadratics. And not only any quadratic, we can build a quadratic that goes directly through all three of these points using this process. Okay, Okay. so how do I do that? Um, well, you're going to take these points, negative 1, 7, uh, 1, 3, 3, 7, and plug them into this equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and uh, you'll end up with a system of equations in terms of a, b, and c. All right, so let me show you. If I plug in the first point, negative 1, 7, uh, and this is your x, this is your y. So I plug in 7 for y. On the other side, I have um, a times negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus b times negative 1. If you wish, I can write it all in. Um, and then plus c. So this equation here is going to be um, 7 equals a squared, uh, just a, sorry, uh, a times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. a times 1 is just a. And then minus b plus c. Okay, so that's our first equation. Then we use the second ordered pair and we get 3 equals a times 1 squared, which is a, plus uh, b times 3, so 3b plus c. Okay, and that's our second equation. And then we use the third ordered pair to get the third equation. So 7 equals a times 3 squared, which is 9a, plus uh, b times 3, which is 3b, and then plus c. And that becomes our system, and we could solve for a, b, and c, and you get your your uh, polynomial that will go through those three points. So, so let's, for kicks, I will do that. a plus b plus c equals 7, and then a plus 3b plus c equals 3, and then 9a plus 3b plus c equals 7. Okay. So first I think I'm going to solve or eliminate c, right? That will probably be the easiest. So I'm going to multiply the first one by negative 1, uh, equation 1, and then leave equation 2 alone. So a minus b plus c is 7. And I got, uh, whoops, I want to go negative a plus b minus c equals negative 7. There it is. And the other guy, a plus 3b plus c equals 3. So, oh, I get something for free here, right? So 4b equals negative 4, and then b must be negative 1. So um, in actuality, I can just eliminate b from this point and then get a, so, so see how I'm kind of, I think I think on my feet, folks. I'm not a computer. Um, I'm going to use this, take advantage of it, and produce an equation in terms of a's and c's, okay? To produce a system in terms of a's and c's. So I could take this guy and, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's not the best strategy, but let's see. So I'm going to take this guy and plop him back in here um, and get a new system. Okay, so my new system, plugging negative 1 into the first equation, I'll get a plus 1 plus c equals 7. And then the second equation, I'll get a minus 3 plus c equals 3. And then... Um, this is, it's going to be no solutions. <laughs> oh my gosh, what did I screw up? Seriously? Okay, well, I'm going to keep on cruising, all right? So, um, this system, it won't work, man. Uh, let me... Let me just go back here and check. I'll, I'll pause the video and I'm going to be checking some stuff. All right. I'll... Okay. I, okay. So I can't. I see. This, um, I think what I'm doing. The problem is. Is I'm. I'm so sorry. Um, you can't see how I, I worked with these 
equations number one and number two. The problem is then I went ahead and started working with equations number one and number two again. So I, I, I got too excited about the fact that I was able to obtain a solution there. And, and then it was kind of like back when you're doing substitution, uh, what happens when you, when you uh, plug, um, so the substitution method way back here, what happens when you, when you just plug this equation back into the same equation? Um, that, that, that would be bad news. So if you plug that in there, you would get 2x minus 2x minus 7 equals 7, and then you'll get 2x minus 2x plus 7, and you end up with an infinite solution case. So you don't want to, <laughs> it's just a, a learning, uh, that's never happened to me before, I apologize. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, I, I got that. Um, then I'm going to go to two other equations, and just, uh, I'm going to go with equation uh, one and three, and I'm going to multiply again the first equation by um, negative one. So I'll get negative a plus b minus c equals negative seven, and then the other guy, nine a plus three b plus c equals seven, and then I'll have eight uh, a um, plus four b, the c's cancel, equals zero. Okay. So I'll be able then to plug negative 1 into this equation and solve for a. So I'll have 8a minus 4 equals 0. In other words, 8a equals 4. In other words, a equals 1 half. Um, then I got two numbers. I could solve for c by, so by back subbing. So I don't need to, to get another system. I don't need to solve a, t a system of two equations to unknowns because I already got two of the variables. See what I mean? You have to think on your feet. Okay, so um, nine times one half uh, minus three. So I'm I'm using equation number three plus c equals seven. Uh, nine halves minus three. Three is the same as six halves plus c equals seven. So I'll get three halves plus c equals seven. Um, Find a, uh, c equals 7 minus 3 halves, get a common denominator, c equals 14 halves minus 3 halves, which equals 11 halves, which kind of makes me think that, that I'm wrong because I got some weird fractions. Um, let's plug it in, see what they say. Maybe, maybe not, right? Okay, so I got 1 half x uh, squared. So I'm just plugging in for a, b, and c into the para the, the quadratic. Um, and then b, I found to be negative 1, so minus x, and then plus c, which is the 11 halves. Yeah, I think it would be a miracle if that's right. Yeah. Um, all right, let me find my mistake. Let me pause it. Oh, you're going to kill me. I found it. Um, it, it was right here. Um, this guy is bad news. So I'm, I'm supposed to be letting x equal 1, and so I, I accidentally put in the y there. So it's actually 1b. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, so let me uh, adjust everything. So this should be 1b. Um, this should be 1b. This should be 2b's. So hopefully this should just be a quick edit, and I won't be in that much trouble. Um, this will be a negative 2, plugging that in to here, 8a minus 8 plus 8, that will be 1. Yeah, usually they, they kind of work out nice, and then this will be uh, 1, so, so then you don't have to worry about all the fractions. 9 minus 3 is 6, plus c equals 7, and then c will be hopefully 1. Let's try it again. Okay, it's a very frustrating section. Um, so what do we say? A is 1, so I can get rid of that coefficient. B is negative 2. And then C is 1. Drum roll. Okay, let me pause the video again. Uh, I see it. So, frick. Copy uh, 9a plus 3b plus c equals 7. 
So I have 9 times 1 plus, and I think this is where I made a mistake, 3 times negative 2 plus C. I mean, I know it is, but um, can't be that sure anymore. The, the more math I do, the less confident I am at doing math, I think. 9 minus 6 is 3 plus C equals 7. So C hopefully is 4. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so this one's another one like that. Okay, so this is a story problem. The sum of three numbers is 16. So x plus y plus z equals 16. The sum of twice the first number, three times the second number, and four times the third number is 51. So the sum of twice the first number plus three times the second number plus four times the third number is 51. The difference between seven times the first number and the second number is 23. So the difference between 7x and uh, 7 times the first number and the second number is 23. I hope that's what they mean. <sighs> okay, let's let's see if this works. So um, the, the third equation is already, already in terms of two variables. I'm just going to use the first two equations then to solve to get an equation to eliminate z. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate uh, z. So I'll multiply the first one by negative 4. So negative 4x minus 4y minus 4z equals negative 64. And then 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 51. So I have a negative 2x minus y equals uh, 3, negative 13. Okay. And then I, I have uh, my system. So let me extend this. So 2 solve system. And what do we have? negative 2x minus y equals negative 13, and then we have 7x. Let's just multiply that by negative 1, right? So negative 7x plus y equals negative 23. And so we get negative 9x equals uh, negative 36, so x is 4. Um, then we can automatically get y. So we have uh, 7 times 4 minus y is 23. So you just look for any equation that has both x and y in it. Um, this will be 28 minus y equals 23. So y equals 5. And then back sub for z. So step 3, back subbing. You don't have to number your steps. I do, though. Back sub. Um, 4 plus y plus 5. 4 plus... 5 plus z is 16, so 9 plus z is 16, so z must be 7, 4, 5, 7, I hope. You can tab, hit the tab button and it shuffles through all that junk. Solve this system. No. <laughs> you know? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply that first equation by 6. Um, multiply the second equation by 4. And multiply the third equation by... Um, really? 12. Okay, I'll get rid of all the fractions. We don't like fractions. So we have x plus 2 minus, uh, distributing the 6, you'll have uh, 6 over 3, which is 2, times y plus 2, um, plus 6z over 2 is 3z, equals 0. Um, the second equation, you'll have 2 times x plus 1, plus 2 times y minus 1, minus z 
equals 24. Third equation, 3 times x minus 5 plus 4 times y plus 1 plus 6 times z minus 2 equals 3 times 17, folks. 1, 3, 2, 51. Okay, so then I need to clean those up. So I have uh, x plus 2 minus 2y minus 4 plus 3z equals 0. 2x plus 2 plus 2y minus 2 minus z is 24. 3x minus 15 plus 4y plus 4 plus 6z minus 12 equals 51. Simplify. So we get uh, x minus 2y plus 3z, and I, I have what? So negative 2, and then add that to the other side, it'll be positive 2. Then I have 2x plus 2y minus z equals, so 2 minus 2 is 0. I'll just have 24 on the other side. 3x plus 4y plus 6z, uh, so negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. Um, minus 12 gives me negative 23. Add that to the other side, so I get 474. All right. Um, then I got a system here. Looks like, what do you want to eliminate, you know? Z. Get rid of Z. Or you can get, it don't really matter. Um, all right, so anyways, uh, I'll go times 3 on the second equation. So x minus 2y plus 3z equals 2, and then 6x plus 6y minus 3z equals, I believe, 72. I'll give the 1, 72. Okay, um, so 7x plus 4y equals 74. That seems unreasonable. Um, let's go to the the uh, second two equations. Multiply the, the second one by 6. So I get 12x plus 12y minus 6z equals 24 times 6 is 4. Carry the 2. 144. Um, and then the 3x plus 4y plus 6z equals 74. Uh, 15x plus 16y equals 8, 7, 11, 2. This seems like it's probably wrong. Solve new system. So I'll multiply the first equation I had by negative 4 to get rid of the y's. So negative 28x minus 16y equals negative 74 times 4. 6 carry the 1, 296. And then the other equation, 15x plus 16y equals 218. We're going to find out really quick how far off I am. Negative 1, 3x equals, really, borrow one there, 8, 7, 78. There's no way. Uh, 78 divided by 13. Oh my gosh, it worked. Uh, so x would be 6. Um, back subbing. So 7 times 6 plus 4y equals 74. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 4y equals 74. 4y equals 24 minus 42, 2, 3, 32. So y is 8, 6, 8, and then we need a z. X is 6, Y is 8, so we have 6 minus, using the first equation, 16Y plus 3Z, I mean 6 minus 16 plus 3Z equals 2, negative 12 plus 3Z equals 2, 3Z equals 
So I must have made a mistake. <sighs> Six and eight, right? Yeah. And of course, somebody has to call. Um, 3Z. And you know it's spam. It's just spam. Ain't, ain't nobody calling. Somebody trying to take advantage of me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, okay, back to work. Um, so what did I do? X is 6. Y, okay, so 6 in for X minus 2 times 8 is definitely 16 plus 3Z equals 2. Um, so I have 6 minus 16. Oh, there it is. It's negative 10. So that'll be 12. Z is 4. All right. So 6, 8, and 4, God willing. Crud. Eight and four. Come on. Okay, so this turns out just to be another one of those three pointer problems where you're kind of. I may even get rid of this one. Let's see what we're dealing with. Some of these are just crazy. I think that's enough. We punished you enough. Let me get rid of all those. All right, because this is just going to get ridiculous. You know, have three years to complete a, a PhD in solving equations with three unknowns. I'll, I'll go in there and, and uh, get rid of some of those for you. Um, unless you want to, I can I can hand you a couple more to do for fun. But I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.